What is inflation, and how does the Federal Reserve evaluate changes in the rate of inflation? Inflation is the increase in the prices of goods and services over time. Inflation cannot be measured by an increase in the cost of one product or service, or even several products or services. Rather, inflation is a general increase in the overall price level of the goods and services in the economy. Federal Reserve policymakers evaluate changes in inflation by monitoring several different price indexes. A price index measures changes in the price of a good, a group of goods or services. The Fed considers several price indexes because different indexes track different products and services and because indexes are calculated differently. Therefore, various ind indexes can send diverse signals about inflation. The Federal Open Market Committee judges that an annual increase in inflation of 2% in the price index for personal consumer expenditures produced by the Department of Congress is most consistent over the long run with the Federal Reserve's mandate for maximum employment and price stability. The FOMC uses the PCE price index largely because it covers a wide range of household spending. However, the Fed closely tracks other inflation measures as well, including the consumer price indexes and producer price indexes issued by the Department of Labor. When evaluating, evaluating the rate of inflation, Federal Reserve policymakers also take the following steps. First, because inflation numbers can vary erratically from month to month, policymakers generally consider average inflation over longer periods of time, ranging from a few months to a year or longer. Second, policymakers routinely examine the subcategories that make up a broad price index to help determine if a rise in inflation can be attributed to price changes that are likely to be temporary or unique events. Since the Fed's policy works with a lag, it must make policy based on its best forecast of inflation. Therefore, the Fed must try to determine if an inflation development is likely to persist or not. Finally, policymakers examine a variety of core inflation measures to help identify inflation trends. The most common type of core inflation measures excludes items that tend to go up and down in price dramatically or often, like food and energy items. For those items, a large price change in one period does not necessarily tend to be followed by another large change in the same direction in the following period. Although food and energy make up an important part of the budget for most households and policymakers, ultimately seek to stabilize overall consumer prices, core inflation measures that leave out items with volatile prices can be useful in assessing inflation trends. Did you get all that? First, you have to take it over a long period of time. Second, they have a lag, so they don't really know. They're just giving their best guess. And then there's core things that can change in prices dramatically, like food, energy items. Those aren't necessarily indicators of where things are going and where inflation's going. So you do have a report on how inflation is measured. They give numbers every month. And let's look at what, uh, what's being said. Eggs are up 38 percent. Margarine, 32. Flour, 22. Coffee, 20. Soup, 19 percent. Lunch meat, 18 percent. Can you say today that inflation has peaked in America, given these numbers? What I can say today is that inflation went up zero percent in the month of July. Zero percent in the month of July. So, yeah, zero percent in the month of July. Um, one of the things about the cost of goods is that when the cost goes up, people will typically buy the lesser price items. When those lesser price items are not available because everyone's buying the, the lesser priced items like food items, then your only alternative might be because those are sold out is to buy a higher priced item of the same type. I liken this to you go to the grocery store, maybe you go to Walmart and you're going to buy some groceries, but they're all out of the kind of groceries you want, the low price groceries there. So then you have to go to Whole Foods to get the same items and their prices might not have gone up so much. They're certainly higher priced and now you're part of, part of buying a lot of those goods. So they're selling goods. So their prices aren't going up, but you are still paying more overall to get the same products that you had before because you have to buy the more expensive version. So there's all kinds of ways to measure inflation. And I say, I think food and energy are two very important parts of the inflation scale. 
if you're paying a lot more for food, that's kind of a necessity. Energy, another necessity. Everything you buy at the store is shipped. It is put on a truck. It is put on a boat. It is put on an airplane. That takes fuel. Energy costs go up. Guess what happens to the price of shipping those items across the country? It goes up. And smaller products, uh, as a percentage of the gas that's being used to ship them from one end of the country to the other to get them to your store, is a higher percentage of the cost. So when energy costs go up, like with our Inflation Reduction Act that has a tax on the energy industry, when those costs go up, there's a lag. And then the companies realize like, hey, it's costing us a lot more to ship these bananas from California where we took them off a boat and to ship them to the Midwest, it's costing us a lot more to do that. So we're going to have to raise the prices. So what you end up with is this, you know, circular talking points about how inflation's coming down and the costs are coming down. But really, the reality is we have not felt the energy increase with our consumer goods quite yet. Most of it's been caused by shortages and prices will, once they raise, there's not much hope for them to go back down. Uh, I think we all know that. And it just becomes one of these cycles where, oh, everybody's charging more. Well, I guess I need to charge more. Oh, everybody's uh, needs to spend more money. Well, I guess I need a higher paying job or I need a raise. And then you get to the point where a company says, well, yeah, we can't hire as many people if we're going to be paying more and people aren't buying our products because you know, they're sold out or the prices went up too much. Everybody stopped buying. We don't need to make as much. We don't need to hire as many people. Maybe we can lay some people off. This is, this is one of those things. Once it's down, once it starts on that trend, price is going up, nowhere to go but up. So here we are. Here's what Joe Biden has to say about it. He's taking a victory lap now about uh, inflation. Actually, I just want to say a number. Zero. Today, we received news that our economy had zero percent inflation in the month of July. Zero percent inflation, which is an outright lie because you don't get zero percent inflation. Um, it climbed 8.5 percent, which is down from 9.1 percent. So it didn't go up. It went down slightly, but that's over the short term, and that's from calculating it from last year. What's going to happen? Well, we're going to kick in a bill where energy costs are going to go up. They continue to lie. They continue to say 0%. They continue to say it's not a recession. We've redefined that term. Maybe we need to redefine what 0% means. This, this is ridiculous. Please check out our shirts, glasshalfwrong.com.